everyone, it's Desiree, and I'm back with day four of my Halloween series for 2018. So in this one, you can see we're going to feature Stampers Anonymous and Hero Arts and their liquid watercolors. So, of course, every year Stampers Anonymous, they come out with some awesome stamps for Halloween. And yes, I get, I just get them all. So this one that we're going to focus on and use is called pumpkin head and I just think it's great Some are smiling some are happy some are curious some are mean um, Some are just funny looking and of course we have our liquid watercolor So this is going to be very basic very simple. I am NOT a watercolorist. So I keep practicing um, at least every day because then it'll make me better um, I don't say perfect okay I say better so I figured this was a good time to do that so I'm gonna choose three of the pumpkins and of course they've got to be a little creepy but that's okay I'm gonna use the sentiment that says happy Halloween and I have pulled out my stamp positioner now usually in my stamp positioner I do keep a piece of fun foam I feel I get better stamping with that but since these are uh, cling rubber stamps I want to remove that piece of foam okay and I don't have to flip my lid because it's always on for rubber stamps because of the foam piece in there so I'm gonna first stamp the two outer ones and I'm actually going to use my archival ink in potting soil so I have all the colors in the um, archival inks um, I have the black and the potting soil and the large and then I have the mini pads for all the other colors uh, but this ink is wonderful to watercolor with um, when it's if I'm doing if I'm looking for black yes I can use the archival but I tend to grab for my Versamark um, probably because it's right in front of me let's be honest um, but I do like watercoloring with the archival ink it's it's perfect it does not move as you watercolor of course the paper that I'm working on is Canson XL watercolor paper um, that is my watercolor paper of choice I do have many more I mean I have the arches cold hot I have the dick black cold hot I have the <laughs> I have it all but I tend to grab for my Canson um, XL watercolor I am stamping all of my images a couple times um, just to make sure that I have a good dark impression I'm gonna put my sentiment and it's gonna be simply happy Halloween I did not care that I may have overlapped on some of the stamps just a little bit when it came to the ground so I wasn't looking to mask so usually what I use if I have some liquid watercolors um, I usually just have a uh, sheet protector and I put a piece of white cardstock in it and I just add the drips of my liquid watercolor um, I also use this if I'm also using my watercolor pan sets or tube sets um, it's easy my um, my paint set can just sit right on top of it off to the side and I can just use the front of it as my palette so the colors that I've pulled out for right now are strawberry orange dandelion cocoa and art print brown um, eventually I'm going to be pulling out more so we zoomed in a little bit and again this is very basic I am using a number four black velvet watercolor brush and I'm putting my brush in my clean water and I'm just dragging a little bit of the color out um, I probably could add a little bit more water but with me putting water down into or onto the pumpkin area with the initial color I've already got that wetness there so I can take this color and just let it travel through I love watching watercolors move when you just touch the water it, it's mesmerizing to me um, so that's what I'll try to do a lot of times <clears throat> if I want to move that color you can see that I'm um, shading around the outside of this pumpkin I started with the dandelion and then I came in with the orange and now I'm actually gonna probably pull in just a touch or a hint of the strawberry just to give it uh, some more 
deeper shadows around the side. I am going to come in with a cleaner brush with just clean water and I'm going to drag that across just to also tone down the dandelion. For my second pumpkin, I'm actually starting with the orange and I'm really making sure that I'll put the concentration on the edge just like I did for the other one, but I'm making sure that I do come in uh, with more water to spread that out. Now this is going to have more strawberries. So each pumpkin will have a different tone, a different color. So here I'm just adding a little bit of the strawberry across this pumpkin and I'm just going to drag that across just to darken the front of it as well. For the last pumpkin, I'm going to mix the dandelion and the orange together. So it's going to give me a lighter shade of orange. And I'm going to put that color down first. Then I'm mixing the orange in with the art print brown. So it's going to give me like a rust color, um, just a little bit of a rust color. I am mixing some water in with that as well. So this is going to be one of those pumpkins that are really light. They're almost white, um, but this one not so much because again, it, it couldn't be perfect. Um, so I'm really going to add in with that rust color. Now, one thing that's great with the Stampers Anonymous stamps is that they do show you where shading is because they usually have the hatch lines going on. So again, you could base it off of that where you should put your darker colors in as well. And you can see I'm kind of doing that when I'm coming in with this darker shade. I'm going right over those areas that have the little hatch lines, the little sketch lines going around it. I'm then just going to take the art print brown directly and just put that on the top of my pumpkins. Not looking for much green on these pumpkins. You know, they're, they're mean looking right now. So, you know, nothing happy is going on here. We'll put green in the ground. That's what we'll do with that. I am going to come in with my heat gun just to dry this um, just a little bit and I'll try to flatten it out. But this way I'll be able to take my green and put that down below. I didn't want them to bleed together. So again, I'm just following the hatch lines that are already there from the stamp. This way I already have some brown in that section as well. Now I am dropping some of it just below the pumpkins just to give a little bit darker shadow in that area. To clean my palette off, I simply just use one of my uh, towels in the room and I just wipe it clean. And I've never had a problem with them not coming up clean. There was a little area that went outside, so I just put a little bit of water on it um, and tried to pick it up. I'm not worried if it's still there. I'm trying to look at the card now. And it's stretching. Here we go. And yeah, it's still there. It's okay. You know, again, not Hallmark. Venga. <laughs> so the green that I used was called Moss, in case I didn't say that. Now the colors that I'm pulling in now are Mold Wine, which is my absolute favorite, Indigo, which is a very dark blue, and then Purple. So I grabbed my one inch Ranger watercolor brush. I'm wetting the top area and I'm just dropping the purple in first. Again, I'd like to see it move and then I'm just going to wipe it right through. So these are going to be very soft. I don't want this dark. Um, I don't, it looks dark, but remember with watercolors, when they dry, they do dry way back. Um, they do go a lot lighter. So yes, I'm using an extremely large brush and I am using this brush to drag this blue down and I am, yeah, I'm going right in between the pumpkins. Um, and you can do that with, with watercolor brushes. You can manipulate them um, to do that. <clears throat> and I'm just spreading this out, making sure that it's thinned, that it's even. And now I'm going to come back to the top and I'm going to continue to add colors into this, whether it's the purple, whether it's the blue, 
or whether it's the mulled wine. Now, this what I just dropped in there now, I believe, was the mulled, the mulled wine color. So now I'm just lifting it. I don't want, you can see that I have color sitting on the top edge. Since I'm tilting this up, it's actually going to move down because I don't want that harsh line at the top. I wasn't quite sure where I was going to um, die cut this. So as I'm drying it, you can see that purple line is getting bigger. And that's because that water that was sitting up on the top is now just pushing down, which is fine. Because if you look, those blues and purples make it look like clouds are going across that. That was just a happy accident. I didn't know that was going to happen. But I like it. I think it's kind of cool. So now we're going to zoom out. We're going to clean up the colors and that's pretty much how we're going to watercolor this piece again very simple give it a try whether it's with these images or images that you have again a piece of sheet protector make sure it's very glossy the sheet protector um and a piece of white cardstock in between it and it's a perfect palette for you i pulled out my penny black vintage frame dies because i love them for this and it gives a great edge. I'm going to be using my vintage photo. So I just wanted to tone those teeth down. Totally forgot about those teeth. So just put a little bit in there. I'm going to go around the edges just to distress them. And then I'm going to come up over the grass to add some brown into that as well. I could have watercolored it, um, but I didn't want to lose the definition of the green that I put in there. So I figured the vintage photo would be perfect for it and wouldn't be that harsh. Whenever I do watercolor, whether I'm ink smushing, um, watercoloring this way, or stamping with watercolors, I do like to back my um, pieces, my design panels, with fun foam. Um, and when I do that, uh, this fun foam just happens to have a sticky side to it, which is very strong, by the way. Um, yeah, very much so. Um, but then I also pull in my two inch film tape that I get from, uh, Uline. This stuff is fantastic. I have had this roll forever. This is also the double sided tape that I use for, uh, when I make my glitter panels, but it is not forgiving. You've got to be able to go right down where you need to go. If you touch it, it's there. Um, so just keep an eye on that, but I do recommend it. <clears throat> I'm then going to pull in my Dark Walnut Nouveau Drops after that set on my standard A2 size card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And it is a this time a side folding because I made a landscape card. I just put a few of the dots in different sizes to go along the top. I do hope you like this project. I'm glad you were here to join me and I hope you're enjoying my Halloween series for 2018. This is my first one and I'm having a good time with it. Um, hopefully next year, I think I'm going to make it a little bit longer because Halloween is my favorite um, holiday. Don't get me wrong. I love the holidays coming up. But when it comes to designing cards and creating and having some fun, uh, Halloween's kind of my holiday of choice. But anyway... I hope everyone's having a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. You don't want to miss all the other fun projects that are coming out. And as always, all the products that I used in this video will be listed down below in the video description. But always remember what's most important, guys. Always be creative.